Hi everyone, today we are going to be drawing a landscape in the style of the artist named Jen Arani. She makes these beautiful landscape pictures and then she adds watercolors in the sky. Because we aren't using watercolors right now, we will be adding ours in crayon, but if it's something that you want to experiment with on your own, you can absolutely do that. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're gonna establish our entire landscape, lay it all out. So I am going to start by not quite halfway up my paper, making a line that kind of comes all the way across. You'll notice that it is wiggling a little bit. It is not perfectly straight and that is totally fine. Then what I am going to do, and you do want to be careful with this part, we are going to be adding some mountains in the background, but we are not simply going to be adding a zigzag line. This is important because it will help you be successful in the next step of your work. So I am going to start part way up and I am going to be making some wide triangles. I'm going to pull it almost all the way down to my ground line, but then I am going to stop. Then I'm going to go back part way up the mountain and I'm going to do it again. And they don't all have to be the same height. Okay, and they can go farther down, but you don't want them to touch your ground line. So I am going to continue doing that all the way across and some might be larger than others, but they are kind of this wide wiggly line. They are not just a zigzag. That's gonna help them look more realistic and it's going to help when we go to add some detail to our work. It is really going to help us be able to do that a lot easier. Okay, so now you will notice that they are kind of overlapping with each other. We're seeing that this one is in front, then this one because this line coming down. That's going to help us later. Now we're going to add some lines in the foreground of our work to show that that's where the snow drifted. So Jen Aranyi's work is very black and white except for her colorful skies. So we are going to come in and again, not perfectly straight. So I'm just gonna make a line and stop it there. You can have your lines touch each other. You can have your lines stop as well. I kind of like how they look overlapping like this. Okay, and then I will add in one more. And this one is probably gonna make it all the way across. So now you will see that I have kind of snow drifts, my mountains, and then my sky in the very back. What you can do now is you're going to do this with your pencil because then you're going to trace over everything. You can either trace over it with a black marker. You can also use a black uh, crayon and or a black colored pencil works as well, just so that you get it nice and dark. Um, you could also use a black fine tipped pen so that your lines would be thinner than what my lines are. You want them fairly skinny. You don't want them really thick. It just gives it more of a delicate feel. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some trees. And these are going to be essentially silhouettes. And I'm going to pull a line up. Now this is going to be probably my tallest tree because it is coming down from close to us. So this is going to be the tallest one because it is the closest to us. And things that are closer to us look larger than things that are farther away. Then what I can do is I'm just gonna kind of come in and add some lines coming out from the center. So this is kind of gonna be one of those pine trees. And on this, it does look like it's going right off the page and that is absolutely fine. 
because it is fairly close to the edge and I'm not totally scribbling I am making my lines come at about the same angle but I'm also trying to show hey you know these bows there would it would be a little bit darker in the center because there would be some closer to us and then on this side and I always find it tricky to make mine perfectly symmetrical so it is absolutely okay if they are not the same on both sides because frankly I can't really do that either but you do want to at least try and you should have it becoming wider as it gets closer to the bottom of the tree so when you think of like those evergreen trees um, they really are wider at the bottom I have one in my yard that has like this big fan around the bottom because it gets so wide Okay, so that's kind of the silhouette of one tree. And you don't have to put yours exactly there. Um, I'm gonna add a few more. You can make choices on where you want yours. So maybe I will have one over here. And again, it's not gonna come up quite as high. And so I'm just getting kind of the very edge of it done and then I'm going to go back in and kind of fill it in some more so it's not quite such a zigzag line looking okay and then maybe there's just gonna be a couple a lot farther away so these are gonna be really small because they're kind of out by where the mountains are You can add some other details too. You could add a house in there if you want to. You could add a, an igloo or an animal or some footprints. So just keep in mind that as things get closer to us, that they would appear bigger. So if you were going to have some footprints, like a bunny was hopping around in the snow, they would be the largest down here and way back here you might not even see them and then you might see some dots some small ones some medium ones and then some larger ones to show hey it was hopping towards us um, or you could just have some coming over here so maybe it came from the tree or something like that now comes my favorite part my second favorite part I love color in the sky but one of my favorite parts of this is we're gonna make a shaded side of our mountain and so I'm gonna start at the top of the mountain and I'm gonna make a line that wiggles down to where that this line stops so I kind of had to think about where it had stopped behind that tree okay and you can make it more wiggly or less wiggly but we want, I wouldn't go too crazy with those wiggles, but we want it to kind of essentially come down and meet. What we're doing is we're creating two sides of almost like a pyramid, if you think of it like a solid. And so, okay, and then this one, I'm gonna make it go right off the page there. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to shade these. And how we're going to shade these is simply by adding lines. Um, this is something that Jen Aranye would do with a really fine line marker um, or a pen. Frankly, if you have a pen, just a black pen, you might wanna use that because it gives you a much thinner line than, for example, the Sharpie that I am using. But this will work. Um, a colored pencil would also work, but all I'm going to be doing is pulling some diagonal lines, kind of following the same direction that the top of the mountain is slanting in, and I'm going to try to make them fairly close together, but without touching, because it, what it's going to do is it's going to make it look like this is darker than the front of our mountains and it's going to give it kind of a cool effect so you can kind of see how now that looks like a mountain in the background 
I'm going to do that to every single one. And then I will check back in in a minute. Okay, so now you can see that my mountains look a lot more like more realistic. Another thing that we can do is we can show in parts of the mountains that part of the snow has kind of slid down. And what we would do is essentially the same thing. So we would still just add those lines in there to show, hey, you know, the snow has slid down a bit and the rock face is showing and it just kind of adds a little bit more interest. Again, I would not overdo this. Um, there is kind of a happy medium with adding too much of this to your work, but it is kind of a cool effect that you can do. And again, I would keep it at that nice diagonal, similar to what your mountains are, just for consistency, so that it's all looking pretty similar. Something else that you would add is just add a few extra lines in the snow, especially kind of coming from where we stopped. So where we stopped this line, she would kind of have it continue a little bit more just to show a little bit of the texture and again don't go too crazy with it but it is kind of a cool effect you can even do that in here a little bit too if you want um, you can just have some smaller lines just because right now our artwork is pretty kind of plain because it's all black and white and Jenarani's work is pretty black and white as well. The cool thing that we are going to do, and this is a bit different than what Jen Aranya would do, is we are going to trace an object onto our paper and we're only gonna color in inside of that object. So if you have a paper plate at home or regular plate, just make sure you trace it with a pencil and then wash it off. <laughs> Don't trace it with a Sharpie, please. Um, if you have a square something, or what you can do is cut out a shape of another piece of paper and trace that. You do want it to kind of be a decent size though. Um, so I have two different examples that I just cut these out of some tag board that I have, but you'll notice that it is a fairly large shape. This is just some oak tag, but you can use regular paper or construction paper. And all I did, you can even see the fold line on it a little bit, is I folded it in half and I cut a round shape to get a circle. So, and I could put this anywhere on my work. I could put it closer to one side, closer to the top. I personally prefer it in the middle, but that's just me. Another thing that I cut out was a heart shape. And again, I could put this on my work and then trace it. I could even have it be at an angle if I wanted to. Really up to me. And that is going to show what we are going to color. And so I'm going to put mine right about there. What you would want to do is trace it with a pencil, but then we kind of want to frame this out a little bit more. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna trace this with a pencil. And again, the heart, I just folded it in half and cut out half of a heart, because that way it was the same on both sides. Um, but it doesn't have to be, you can make whatever shape you want. It could be a square whatever makes you happy and whatever works best for you. Now what I'm going to do is because I want this to stand out compared to the rest of the black lines is I am going to still be using my Sharpie, but I'm gonna go over it multiple times just to thicken that line a bit. So I'm going to do that and then I will check back in.
Okay, at this point, I feel like my line is thick enough to kind of stand out from everything else. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick out the colors for my sky. And Jenna Rani would use purples and blues and pinks and make these beautiful sunsets. Um, you could also use oranges and reds, but what you want to be doing is using your lightest color down at the bottom and your darkest color up at the top. So if you were using purples and pinks, you would have your lightest pink down here and your darkest purple up here. Remember, we are only coloring inside the shape. We are not coloring out here because that way it's going to put emphasis on our shape. So I think I am going to start with an orange because um, that is my favorite. So what this is, is this is a yellow orange. If you just have a regular orange, that is totally fine. It does not need to be exactly the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of color across in here. But remember, stop at the line of your shape. Do not color outside whatever shape it is you've made. So if you made a heart, a triangle, square, whatever, don't color outside of that shape. So now I have kind of a stripe. The next color I'm going to use is a regular orange, if I can find one. Um, just because it's a hair darker and I am blending it into the color below it. So I'm covering over part of it because that way it helps it look like it's just fading nicely. We have been practicing a lot with value and you should be able to kind of carefully fade your colors together. Um, and again, I just color right into it because I don't want it to be super stripy. I want it to be a nicely faded sky to show, hey, you know, it's a sunset or sunrise or evening. And again, I'm going to color that right in. And I can always go back in with my other color and use that more. And again, I am going into where the tree is because I would be able to see the color of the sky through those tree branches right in there. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of check because I feel like this is lopsided to me. So I am going to bring this side up just a little bit because I want the coloring to be similar. Um, both sides since I have kind of this big peak right here. And I know that my orange is a little bit challenging to see, but I am trying to make it look the same on both. The next color that I am going to use, and notice I'm keeping them up here, the next color that I'm going to use is a red orange. Now, if you do not have all of these colors, again, you can pick and choose which colors you would like to use. You could use just orange to red and then red to violet because you would just kind of essentially work your way around the color wheel. And I'm just going to continue to work my way up this heart and you'll notice I'm staying inside the heart shape. I am not coloring outside of it. And again, it's still just kind of looking like a stripe going right across. And I do want to make sure I'm coloring right up to the edges of those mountains. So I'm going to keep coloring this and then I'll check back in when I'm done. Now that my sky is colored, I do want you to notice that on the violet, I did pull it down in. I was just pressing really lightly. So in here where you see those kind of darker stripes, that is actually the violet. Um, and that may, it kind of makes it look like there are clouds in the distance. 
Another thing that you can do to kind of help your artwork look a bit more interesting is since these are snowy mountains and this is snow down here, the snow would actually reflect some of the light from our sunset. So what you can do is you can just ever so lightly kind of go in and add some of that orange color. Um, so you would really only add just a little bit and just a touch of it. You don't want the whole thing to just be orange then. I shouldn't see it all getting colored in, but it's just really light and it really just helps your artwork look a little more interesting and you can barely see it on mine, but it does help if you were in person, you'd be able to see it a little bit better. And I can also do a little bit kind of along in the mountains as well. Okay, and it just helps it be more interesting and a bit more uh, realistic looking because it would have some of that color in there showing, hey, you know, it's reflecting off of the sunlight is reflecting off of our snow in our picture. So, and again, I'm only using that bottom color because that's really what would be showing. So now you can see that my heart is the only thing that has color in it. The rest of it is black and white. That is creating what's called emphasis on our artwork. It's where this will stand out more compared to out here just because it has a bit more detail and it's colored compared to the rest of our work. I hope you enjoyed following along to create our Jen Arani inspired artwork and our beautiful landscapes. And I will see you next time. Bye everybody.